behavior consultant. I am not a veterinarian, but I do a lot of veterinary writing. And I thought during this time uh, when it's a little bit more difficult to get our pets into the veterinarian to get help, I thought I'd share some of my more popular blogs. Uh, I may actually get uh, a few tips from <laughs> my own furry helpers here. This is Karma and uh, so I'm going to put him to the side so that I can actually share with you one of my most popular blogs. Here you go buddy. Cat colds and kitty congestion. Now cat colds are one of the most common health conditions affecting our kittens and our adult cats. Feline upper respiratory diseases often affects a rescue and shelter cats as well. Now, while there are preventative vaccinations that can help protect our cats, many kittens become exposed to these viruses or these bacteria before they're ever vaccinated. And once infected, a cat can have a flare up of what I call the cat snorkels, the sniffles, sneezing, watery eyes, anytime they become stressed and of course, these days, a lot of us are stressed and that feeds over into our kitties as well. Now, I'm washing my hands constantly and staying home with my fur kids as much as possible these days. I know many of you are too. Now, one of the most positive things is that with this pandemic going on, it's not affecting our fur kids. This is a very good thing talk with your experts, with the veterinarians about this. But as far as we are aware, this is not something that you can get from your pets. And the chances of them transmitting anything back to you is just so small as to be negligible. However, cats still can be affected by their own viruses. So what are you gonna do when you have a kitty cat that is, is feeling under the weather and you cannot necessarily get to the veterinarian. These are some tips that are going to help with your fur kid at home. Of course, I want you to seek veterinary care whenever you possibly can, but in the interim, these are some things that you need to know about feline upper respiratory infections. You know, a stopped up nose and crusty eyes, they're not only miserable for humans, but that's kind of the signs that cats will show as well. Now, cat, cat colds do not transmit back to people and people don't give their colds to cats. So in that, that situation, at least we don't have to worry about that, but there are some complications of cat colds that you should be aware of. Uh, cats typically have more problems with congestion than dogs do. Uh, the bugs that cause uh, feline upper respiratory infections usually are not lethal in adult cats, but in kittens, they can cause some complications. And if a cat has a stuffed up nose and can't smell their food, the appetite decreases. So they may start snubbing their food bowl and not uh, feel like eating. And that can be very debilitating in a cat that's already ill or in a kitten that uh, needs that nutrition. Now, while typically we fall in love with that, that poor little sick shelter kitten, those are the ones that are probably going to have the most at risk for some of these illnesses. So just be aware of that because kitten season is coming up uh, every spring and there are going to be some babies out there needing homes. If you adopt, and I hope you will adopt, these are some ways that you can help them through this. Um, just like with people, there's no real cure for what we call cat colds, um, but supportive treatment can help your cat feel better. It's important for your cat to feel well enough to eat so that they continue to fight off these illnesses and get back 
to health. So you can use a vaporizer to help unclog the kitty's nose. You can put your cat in a relatively small room and use a cool mist humidifier. Use it just the same as you would for a child with a stuffy nose and use that a couple of times a day. That not only helps break up the congestion, but it can moisten, moisture all those inflamed tissues and the tender eyes and help them feel a little bit better. Now, if you don't have a vaporizer or a humidifier, a hot shower can work. Take your pet into the bathroom with you and run the hot water shower so the air becomes really steamy, okay? 10 minute session several times a day works great. Uh, don't go for much longer than that though because the heated air can be a little difficult for pets to breathe, especially uh, the flat nosed kitty cats like the Persians that have the kind of squashed in noses. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, if the nose is crusting over or the eyes are sealing shut with matter, you're going to want to relieve that as well. Just use warm, wet cloths and or cotton balls and soak them in warm water and just apply those to the secretions, let them soften up and then wipe away. You don't want to peel the dried matter off because that can, that can irritate the skin underneath, but do that, keep them clean. That's going to help them breathe and help the irritation that those crusties cause to the eyes. Now, to soothe any sore tissue after you've cleaned off the mucus, you're going to dab on a bit of just plain saline solution, like what you would use with your contact lenses, or possibly a little bit of baby oil. That also can make it easier to help clean away those crusties. Um, and I've also seen folks have good success with a product called Udder Balm, U-D-D-E-R-B-A-L-M. This is made for cows, and it, it's a product that uh, helps with chapped tissue. So like on uh, the little chapped noses, that can be very helpful. And for dogs that have chapped noses, it also can work pretty well. You can get that at like tractor supply places and farmer supply uh, operations. It's great for human hands that are chapped as well. Now, when thick secretions fill up the lungs, it can be hard for pets to breathe, even when their nostrils are clear. So there's a technique called coupage that helps break up the clogged matter that are, that's kind of stuck down inside the lungs. You'll hear wheezing and that kind of thing. Basically what you do, it's, it's a French word that means you know, thumping on the chest. All right, it's often used to help children that have cystic fibrosis to break up those, uh, those secretions that, that clog the lungs. So what you can do is you hold your hands in a cupped position, kind of, kind of like this, okay? And you're gonna gently thump on each side, each side of the cat's uh, chest, all right, on, the, on each side of the rib cage and that's gonna help break loose the mucus. Use this technique two or three times a day along with a humidifier to ease the pet's congestion. Now, once you're done that, then there is also some follow-up care for your kitty cats that are, this is going on for any kind of length of time. Um, refusing to eat can make the cats even sicker. So you want to, to help spark that appetite. Um, wiping away the crust and the music, mucus is going to help a great deal, kind of let them sniff their food because that's going to help stimulate the appetite, but it can help even more to make the food more pungent, more smelly. Cats are stimulated to eat by the smell of their food. The way you can do that is just warm the food up, stick it in the microwave for five seconds, five, 10 seconds, not to get hot, but just to get a little bit warm and that kind of unlocks the aroma, makes it a little stinkier. Um, you don't want it to be too hot, just right at or below cat normal body temperature. So right around 95 to 98 degrees. Cat normal body temperature ranges between 100 to 102 degrees or so. Um, that actually mimics 
uh, the body temperature of prey that a cat would eat. So that's going to help stimulate them in that, um, that effect as well. The um, more pungent the food, the better. So um, any kind of moisture added to the food, like if you uh, typically feed a dry kibble, soak it with a little chicken broth, zap it in the microwave a little bit, helps unlock that aroma. Um, meat baby food will help a great deal. Avoid any onions in it, but any of the meat baby foods, the turkey, uh, some of the broth foods, it's gonna be easier if the cat has sores in his mouth, which can sometimes help, so it's gonna be softer for him to eat. Uh, and just find ways to do this, mush up the food. You can put the food um, in the blender with some uh, no, no salt um, broth and mush it up really well and offer that to the cat just a little bit at a time, not all at once because that can kind of overstimulate them. So just a little bit at once. And so I hope these tips are gonna help you if you have a, if you have a kitty cat that is suffering with the, with the snorkels and I hope that your cat recovers very quickly and that you stay safe and healthy as well. I do the little letter. I do the little letter.